After I just wanted to be famous, so I just wanted that. I didn't care about anything else. I thought it would get me more drugs, more sex, more money. I wanted to be famous. And that didn't change until I was early 30s. What's not new is <clears throat> um, our connection to <clears throat> everyday life, to stories, to experiences um, and uh, what's new is there's a more popular element. Uh, Andrew's music production is, is um, fuller in some, in some of the tunes. Um, he's uh, pushed that on in his own ways. Um, I couldn't sort of explain exactly how he does it but um, the music's definitely changed again, uh, but it's not been a, it's not been a, a dramatic departure in the sense of a complete makeover. But it it presents the new recordings as you know uh, a step forward. Well, I got really into sort of 80s R&B, soul and Shaka Khan, um, <clears throat> Luther Vandross, Alexandra O'Neill. Um, I got into that kind of thing because it was trashy. I'd love it. I've got a soft spot, for, soft spot for that kind of stuff anyway, but I just like the idea of merging it in, you know, and I was listening to more and more of it. Drake, uh, stuff, um, a lot of trap music and drill, American stuff and English stuff with lots of singing in as well. Um, so I got more into the idea of that um, because that was the music I'm into at the minute, you know what I mean? So I wanted to try and mix that in. I'm not entirely happy with them, you know. You know, they're not, I don't cringe at them, but I think, oh, I've got doubts about them. You know, you just do. So. Um, but in the end, you just have to go, well, that's as much as I can do to that. And um, I'm going to put it on the album because it complements the rest of the rest of the content. It's important to move on and not be tagged with this punk thing, you know, because as much as I like all that, it's 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 much more than that. <clears throat> I'm not trying to say that I'm turning my back on the idea of, you know, talking about issues, uh, sociological issues and political issues, but um, I don't want to get stuck in one genre of music or in one formula. It's interesting you say that. I never really thought that, but um, I mean, that's, that makes me happy, you know, because negativity is interesting. You know, cynicism is interesting. Uh, you know, the not darker regions of, of emotion, but to me they're the, they're more honest. You know, um, I can't be doing with anything too positive because I don't, I'm not that I'm not a positive person. <laughs> so uh, uh, you know, I I want stuff that that reflects my personality. I got a job. I run away in the aisles at the co-op, mate. No prom. French fancies. Mr. Kipling acid dances. Let's laugh at local record plants. Elitist dippies. Arrogant cunts. Ian Beale tie trunks. Tie pants. Grandma wank. I only talked about the things around me, and I talked about my dislikes. I talked about my failures as a person. I talked about my hatred towards people that had done me wrong or people that I despised because of their, their um, complacency, because things are obviously not that good in modern life. And so, you know, after that, um, you, you get the tag of, you know, you kind of like, well, you are a spokesperson, but I'm not, you know. And you know, ever, you, there's been other people in my situation that have said the same thing, but and it's true. It's you, you just don't feel like one. You know what I mean? I mean, I might, I'm, I'm not going to be like this forever, 
or I might be like this forever, who knows, you know, but if I change, then you're gonna get bollock for it, aren't you? It's like, oh, look at you, you know, you're not doing that anymore, why do you sell out? It's like, it's like, fuck off, you know, it's just, I'm into music, I'm into expression, and that expression at the minute is solely, uh, solely interested in talking about things from what I see, from the streets, from work, whatever, you know, uh, but it centers around um, a feeling of, um, you know, unjust, a feeling that, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to navigate your way through this corruption, which I think is interesting and, you know, I'll, I'll probably continue that, but who knows, you know. It's a real bit of a double-edged sword, really, you know, because um, I've, I've kind of, because we're successful now, it's, you know, you're fighting against the idea that you can't be working class because you're successful and you live in an affluent middle class area, you know, which is bollocks, you can, you know. And uh, you can't really take the working class out of somebody because it's, it's there, you know, I've, I've not got a great command of words, uh, I've got a local accent and I really don't know that much. And these are all, <laughs> these are all classic traits of working class people. And I don't think that will change. I like working class humor. I like basic stuff, you know. So, um, you know, to be, uh, to be uh, labeled anything else is just preposterous. You know, it's just like, you can't be posh. You have to be born posh. You know, people don't understand that. Posh is a, is a bloodline, it's not, you know, it's not, you don't just become posh. <laughs> you, can try. you can try, yeah. And a lot of people do, and they look stupid, you know. I mean, you can have lots of money and no posh people, but you'll stick out like a sore thumb. You'll always be a scumbag. <laughs> There is a lot of mockery in there because a lot of the time I don't like myself, you know. And a lot of the time I think, well, you know, who, who am I to sit there and start pointing the finger when I'm actually just as bad, if not worse sometimes, you know. It's a, uh, it's a circus of, um, what's the word? Oh, fucking hell. Uh, you know, I'm a hypocrite, do you know what I mean, a lot of the time and it's important to put that into the songs. Yeah, it was good, we really, I really liked it. I learned a lot from it. I learned, I learned how, to, um, how to spot a radio single in amongst the body of work you've got. It might not necessarily be the songs you really like, but you have to think about how it's gonna be presented on radio. So, that was interesting to me. I didn't see that as some form of commercialization. I just saw that as a important tool to get your message across, to help promote your band. You know, they didn't mess with the way we work, so that was never an issue. Um, and also I saw the importance of infrastructure. People say that record labels are controlling, dominant, are killing the industry, but record labels are, always, are also very good at infrastructure. That's the reason why they're record labels and you're not, you know what I mean? The reason why they're successful and you're not, perhaps, because they've got infrastructure. The idea of that interested me. So um, we left prematurely because it was put to me that we didn't need them and that we could do it on our own. Uh, but it soon proved that we had nothing in place to release Eaten Alive. Uh, there, were there, were, there wasn't any real mechanisms in place. You know like when you see a tub of butter or margarine and it, you've got the margarine in, in the tub and then the plastic all around it and the lid on top and it's just full of the, like, the logo for the margarine or butter and it's just like, you just want the butter don't you? It's, and I know you've got to carry it home but you know what I mean, it's just everything's just in your face and I, I just don't think you need backdrops. You know, these big bands might do, Lady Gaga might need one, you know what I mean? I mean, if you're playing to 60,000 people a night, then perhaps you need someone more on stage to look at because there's going to be a lot of people there, but, but do you? You know what I mean? I don't think you do, you know? I don't think you do, not for what we do anyway. I, I think it just ruins it. You just feel like everyone else, you know? And it's bad enough feeling like everyone else anyway, you know? 
these festivals herd you in and pull you out. You know, it's like, oh, fucking hell. So, so no, I don't think we need anything else. A backing singer, perhaps, I thought about that for the last album. I thought about getting a woman in to do some of the uh, more singy bits with me. But I thought, oh no, that's been done. And then we're gonna have to take them on tour and then pay someone else. <laughs> no, if I can do it, if we could do it on our own, why, we, you don't need to. Unless, of course, it becomes apparent that that idea is brilliant, of which case, you know, it, then I would gladly do that. But um, just, for, just as a token thing, I think it wouldn't work, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I have, yeah, I quite like it actually. Uh, it's, um, it's good, they've got the right energy. They've got that, doo -doo 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 -doo. that beat and um, yeah, the vocal's good. I think it's good, yeah. Putain. Putain, mais j'en ai marre de me faire chier. Assis sur ce muret à regarder les camions de tomates. I think I'm really proud of it and I will, as life goes on and when it stops and I perhaps I, I'm not doing anything, I've run out of ideas and I will constantly walk around telling everybody how important I used to be <laughs> and how much of a, and how much of a, uh, you know, an impression Stephen Mods made on the music scene in my, you know, in, in, in the early part of the century. Um, but no, I don't, I don't pat myself on the back too much about it because it's never enough. You want more, you want it to, to be bigger, you want it to be better. And I don't know if that is the trap of the ego, if that's the ego talking or what. But I don't usually uh, stop to think how, how um, what I've accomplished, accomplished really. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>